All hey. right, guys. Hey, we're here now. Coach Grant and Rahul here. Uh, we're going to be doing a sales training. I'm going to kind of zip through the introduction. Um, a lot of you guys may have already seen Grant in a previous interview. Um, I call him the sales whisperer. Um, I met him less than a year ago or around a year ago. We did an interview around his birthday. Uh, we were just live or we thought we were on Zoom. So apologies for being a little bit late. I did the most amazing introduction for him though, I think. <laughs> but today we're going to get down and dirty. We're going to get into some sales skills, how to use Facebook, how to use um, Messenger to get people on book calls, and then the conversion process that Grant employs in his business. And he's consulted for multiple six and seven figure coaches. Um, he's currently run posts where he writes something on Facebook, just some words that resonate with people's ears. And one single post made 80K in, in revenue. That's fucking amazing. So whoever's here, um, hashtag live, hashtag replay. And if you can let us know where you're from, that'd be awesome. So we can give you a shout out, um, city and state or city and country. So with that being said, why don't you do a short little intro on yourself, Grant? <laughs> well, I, there's no way I could beat the one that you gave me before we were live. So I appreciate you, brother. Um, I mean, I'm Grant. I've been in the online coaching space now for about four years. Uh, I'm 23, so I'm, I'm still a young buck, but I've had the opportunity to learn from some of, in my eyes, the best salespeople that walk the planet uh, that are still breathing at least. So I'm excited because I just love being able to share what I know. Uh, basically standing on the shoulders of giants. And I think the best way to describe what I do is what you said when we weren't live is I really just view my role as counseling people towards good decisions. I, I don't view myself as a sales person, so to speak, really just a counselor to help people get what they want. And if you can do the same, sales will be a lot more fun. It'll feel better and you'll find yourself closing more deals as well. Yeah, 100%. I mean, Grant is so like beyond his years of his age. Um, this guy's like super advanced, but it's also because he's learned, like he said, from great mentors before him um, that are still around. He still gets mentorship. And that's one of the key elements to being a great coach is that you have to have good coaches behind you, too. Um, and that's why I want him here, because his demeanor is so calm. And every time we've talked, it's just such composure. It's chill. It has nothing to do with emotion and trying to close the other party where one side wins, the other side is now on your team. It's what's the best decision and the best path. And sometimes you ask really hard hitting questions to make people stop procrastinating. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the key is like one of the keys of sales is just being in a position where a person's willing to open up and asking good questions like open loop type questions where they can think for themselves versus like, this would benefit you, am I right? Like leading them too many times. Um, that's not, doesn't go to say that you don't do that in sales, but it's just sometimes early on you want them to, you are their psychologist, you are their counselor. You're really kind of like selling a best friend to a best friend. And how does that best friend get a better path? Is it with you or alone? And if it's alone, you need them to realize the consequences of, mm -hmm going down that lonely path of what you've already been doing and expecting a different result. So why don't, I mean, how do like you drive the train, man? I want to, I want to sit back and relax. I, I just want to hear coach Grant. This is a training for me. <laughs> oh man. Well, the, the only issue is that we've got about 43 minutes here before my next call. And, and if given the time I, I could talk for hours, days uh, about this, cause it's really my passion. My passion is being able to connect with people and, you know, inspire them to take forward progress in their life. So <laughs> I, I would love to be able to just spit something I perceive as valuable, but ultimately I think we'll be best served if maybe you ask me some selfish questions for you. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So let's let's go into uh, agency. Like, oh, there's a lot of agency zone own, owners in this group, and what they offer are retainer based services. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of like thousand dollars, three thousand dollars a month will work in those price ranges. And the first step is like, like I guess I'm gonna ask some basic questions because there's some gonna be some newer agency owners in here, but. I'm leveraging Facebook for our lead source. There's paid ads, there's organic. Uh, on the organic side, what I do is I go out and I start friending a bunch of people who I want to do business with and connect with. Mm -hmm. So that's step one. Step two is identify the groups where my clients may be 
add value to certain bottlenecks or problems or questions they ask in those groups. I personally don't start fresh messages whatsoever. Um, I only add value on top of already existing messages where problems may arise. And I try to do it. I wait intentionally not to be the first or the 10th comment. I want to be beyond that. Um, so I have a better answer all in one long block. Um, so I can get hearts, likes and other people to friend me too. Um, and then from there, I'll you now have that as my audience. I move them to my audience. And now when I post on my profile, I get people raising their hand, liking and sharing or whatever they're saying on my profile. And then from there, we start the conversation in Messenger. Mm -hmm. Which in case you glossed over that too quickly for anyone to catch, that's a real ninja trick when so many people are sending out cold messages, what I call virtual door knocking, like, hey, want to make more money? Or what I primarily coach at this point is fitness professionals, which it's even less effective. Like, hey, are you fat? <laughs> and, and what you were talking about is, is so fantastic. Going to a pond where your fish are already hanging out, throwing in a piece of bait. Instead of just trying to jump in the water and go grab a fish, you're just tossing in some bait, waiting for it to bite. And then once you reel it in, now you've got a sail. And yep. it's something that I like to do that you can apply right now for, for all of you watching is when you do uh, what you just heard and you leave a comment that's value driven on somebody else's post, like in a group where your ideal clients hang out or on an influencer's post, um, do your best to add to the pool of meaning that already exists and then make sure that you give notifications to everyone else that's already shown interest in the conversation. They've showed interest by commenting. So go heart their comments after you leave yours. They all get notified. They see your value-driven comment. And now they're more likely to accept your friend request so they can actually see messages if you're sending them. Most people's messages are just sitting in their unread messenger folder. And uh, I'm a minimalist. I don't, I don't want to waste time sending messages to people that won't see them or who won't care. Yeah, hundred percent. No, that's great. So once like from the sales conversation, once we've got them into our ecosystem, we've had some sort of exchange of value, the hearts, the likes, the engagement now elevating the next step into a conversation. So for example, the, the famous mission post, let's say is my mission to help 25 per real estate agents. I was going to say personal injury attorneys, but we'll go with realtors. I think there's a lot, a lot of people focusing towards realtors right now, but it's my mission to help 25 realtors hit six figures this year. Who's with me? Strong arm, right? So now when somebody says, I'm in, I'm in, can you talk about the process of kind of asking the first few questions that are less invasive to kind of counsel them? and lead to the more invasive level questions to hop towards a call? Yeah, so that that mission post that you're referencing, uh, I believe it was actually Andrew Cruzy that like came up with that in the first place. And he was a business partner of mine for about a year. And it works wonders because essentially it's just a rallying cry, right? Like, hey, this is where I'm going. Who's coming with me? And everyone that obviously raises their hand, you could call it a hand raiser post or a mission post. When you're actually then seeing them identify as a lead, now it's an invitation to go into a messenger conversation. But where a lot of people I think mess up is that they don't gain permission. It doesn't feel like a good conversation. You say like, hey, I'm on a mission to do this. You hop into their inbox, say, hey, I'm a coach. I can help you do that. And all of a sudden you actually put yourself into an inferior position because you're chasing them. What you want to be doing is being chased at all points. You want to maintain that authoritative posture. And so I'll always get buy-in going into Messenger first. Like, hey, Raul, thanks for the comment on the post about topic. Uh, I'm just curious, man. Well, is that still something that you're looking for? Or is that still a goal of yours? Because I want them to say yes first. And then from there, I'm going to gain permission to actually ask questions. Because what I was talking about before, counseling someone towards good decisions, it needs to feel collaborative, not investigative. So I'm going to ask, like, is it cool if I ask you a couple questions to see if or how I might be able to support you? Or depending on how you're opening the door to conversation, like if it's a two-step post where you have a resource, for example, it's like, hey... Um, you know, just finishing it up. Mind if I ask you a couple quick questions so I can make it as valuable as possible? Or again, just framing in their best interest. Hey, I appreciate the engagement. 
Uh, I'm always looking for inspiration for content for people just like you. Is it cool if I ask you a few questions? It helps me put out really valuable stuff. So you just want to make sure that your communication is framed in their benefits so they'll actually be collaborative. People, if you don't do that, they're going to hold what's actually true close to the chest and like protect it because they feel like you're trying to take something from them. But if it's a collaborative relationship, they're more than willing to actually communicate with you, which is necessary to actually get into the deeper stuff like you were talking about, which is their real goal. The pain that they're actually in and being honest and transparent about it, what their perceived problem is, like why they think they haven't been able to get what they want, their commitment level to solving the challenge, i.e. like, is this something where it'd just be nice to have or are you committed to this? And then their contact information, meaning like booking the call itself. And in case that wasn't like super clear, those are really the only things that I care about gathering in Messenger before I get to a call. Their vision, their pain, their perceived problem, which then gives me the opportunity to give feedback to them and open up a bigger loop. And then their commitment to solving the challenge and then inviting them to a call. So do you want to just move on from that now or do you want to go any a little deeper into yeah let's go a little deeper like give an example of let's just say like I'm, I'm, I'm i give out the answer of like you know what i've just been struggling i need a sales setter for my business it's been holding me back i'm doing everything what's like the next open loop question to invite them to that conversation mm. so uh, we can roll from make sure. to too yeah, I just want to make sure we actually like define what I mean by open loop because this is this is how Netflix series actually keep you pushing play when it's two hours past your bedtime and you just want to be done and you're like, there's no way I'm watching another episode and then in the last minute someone gets shot and you're like, what the? And you gotta <laughs> you gotta click play. So it's not gonna feel good, for example, if you're in conversation with someone and you just keep holding back they start to feel like you're just trying to get something from them. And so this is where I get the question a lot, like how many questions should you answer in Messenger before you invite them to a call? Like how value driven should your communication be? How long should it go on? Really what you wanna do is gather that information that we talked about, close the small loop on their perceived problem while opening up a bigger loop that would be addressed with a call. And what that looks like, in this example, because you said, you know, I, I think I just need to get a new setter on my team so I can have more appointments booked. And I would say something along the lines of, well, cool. So are, are you open to some feedback? I've worked with a few hundred businesses actually helping them achieve the goals that you just mentioned. Uh, so I might have some insights to share. And so now once I've gained permission to give insights, I'm going to give feedback similar to like, so I totally get that you want to bring on a setter. And in fact, it's a pretty simple process from finding someone that's hungry and motivated and training them up to go through a, a simple process to book calls. But what I tend to see is that most people bring on setters too early or they don't have solid systems and infrastructure on the back end, which means even though calls get booked, you then end up overwhelming your sales rep with low quality calls that aren't framed in a way that actually they can close. And it's really more of a, uh, like a deep problem. So what I'm basically just trying to do is let them know like, hey, this is technically the solution to the small problem, but if it's solved, here's the bigger problem that you're going to deal with. And in that way, you're you're putting on display your authority and at the same time, like leaving them with the feeling, okay, that was valuable, but my problem's not solved. Now I see this bigger problem. So then I'm going to go, you know, makes sense. Do you agree? Yeah, that, that makes sense. And then you can let them know, hey, I'm happy to lay out a step-by-step -step roadmap for you that you could utilize not just to solve the setter problem, but also the overall revenue issue in your business so you can accomplish those goals. It's a bit too much to type out here, though. Uh, so what would probably be most appropriate is if we spent a little time together on the phone so I could give you a better direction. If that sounds exciting to you, let me know. I'll send you a link to book a call. So again, closing a smaller loop, opening a bigger one, and their opportunity to close that bigger loop is by saying yes, like going through the next stage of compliance to booking a call. And a lot of times just saying something like, hey, whether or not we work together, you will walk away with an actionable plan to solve this problem. 
kind of a, a risk mitigation technique, if that makes sense. Kind of like a money back guarantee. Like, hey, you know, we could work together, mm-hmm. but whether or not, uh, whether we do or not, I'm going to make sure you have an actionable roadmap to go forward with. Do you guys love that? If you do, just give us some love here. Hit those heart buttons and type in hashtag love it. Um, these are like, at, like while you may know a framework of messenger strategy or communication strategy, this is like proven and time tested. So if you're still under six figures or if you're past that and under seven figures, this is so important to kind of hold on to that like consultative approach. It's ju- it's the difference between you getting emotional and telling the other person to go fuck themselves really is what you're thinking in your head. When in reality, your job, you never had that person as a client to begin with. They're a complete stranger. They don't know who the hell you are. And your job is to guide them through giving you good answers like the doctor would if you were helping them with like solving their uh, a physical pain problem. Like, so that's the same thing we're doing is solving a, a major pain in their bank account, in their life, in their relationships, et cetera. Um, so it goes bigger than just sales. Um, this goes into like, digging deep into somebody's like future. So a lot of us have a lot of power once you get to that stage or once you you get feedback from clients or kids or whoever you're coaching or, or working with, when they give you the compliment of like, without you, we wouldn't even be where we are. Now that A feels good. So that's like, just that's currency to a lot of coaches is just that feedback. But the power that we have to expand that to much more people can just be, much more clearly defined with the right questions, the right tonality, and the right kind of like leadership, if you will, but also the intention that you have for that message. So Mm -hmm. if you go in with the intention of, I want their money in my bank account, when you chase that money, it's gonna run the fuck away. Um, But when 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 you allow money to come naturally, it'll be chasing you and you'll be one of those guys that you don't talk to your friends because you're too busy for two weeks or three weeks or a month. And they'll be like, dude, I've just been getting an influx of clients. So that's what we want to get out of this conversation is how do you now transition those little shifts to don't chase, let it come to you, but know that fine line on how to get money to chase you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So so um, now going into the conversations, I know you have the the six question framework, the five by seven card, and and whoever's here, if you're gonna if you type in hashtag five by seven, or no, forget the hashtag five by seven, maybe we'll we'll share it with you. So you gotta, <laughs> you gotta type in five by seven. Um, it's a six question framework, and we're about to go over it. Is that cool? <laughs> yeah, and you know what's hilarious about that because that was actually uh, a post that ended up generating, like you said, about, about eighty grand in sales on the back end. And for some reason, it just got revived again. This is from October twenty sixth. There are just hundreds of comments, and all of a sudden, yesterday, there's more. <laughs> yeah. Um, so like one the ninja trick there. I do is I go back and comment on some of my older posts that had either no juice and I thought it was going to get a lot of love and I was disappointed. So I'm like, fuck this. Let me go comment myself. <laughs> and then it rises up in the algorithm. It trips up the algorithm and then it restarts. Same thing with one, one of my posts, I think is like over a thousand comments and um, overall. And I, I, re, I, I re-entered a, a comment or I tagged somebody in it and um, it just re, re, reignited the flame, the algorithm. So that's a little ninja hack there. If you uh, have a disappointing post and it should have been like you thought it was going to do well, just recomment or tag a bunch of people saying, hey, I thought of you about this post. What do you think? And then let that comment roll come back in. And, or some of your more more popular posts that just killed it, just go recomment or tag people in it. Uh, yeah. And that'll that'll help uh, change the algorithm. And you'll see Dennis Yu is like, he'll, he'll post on his 2017 post and all of a sudden it just blows up today. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so. So like, obviously the sales framework that is given away with that post, it's super valuable. People use those to close multiple five figure deals. It's the exact process that I was using closing $60,000 one call close sales over the phone. Um, But I would also not just look at what it says, but look at how I did things. The post itself was so effective and it's super simple and you could pretty much utilize the same template. Um, you know, funnel hack it, so to speak, to uh, mm-hmm. to drive a lot of hand raising so that you can then have your conversations of your own. Um, but did you want to just dive into like the questions themselves while we're live here? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Uh, so 
to be clear, I've gone through a whole bunch of different sales scripts and processes uh, from different coaches that I've hired or just being on the receiving end of sales calls and kind of feeling things out. And I mentioned before, I'm a minimalist. I don't like having words in front of me that I need to read because it, it detaches you from the other person. And sales is really a people thing. It's not like you're inputting a certain code into a computer with the right magic words at a certain time. And then all of a sudden you have the outcome you want. People don't work that way, right? We're emotional creatures. So if you disconnect emotionally from the person that you're communicating with, you can feel that dissonance and then it's much more difficult to close a sale. So remember that selling is not telling. It's strategic question asking that is intentionally helping your prospect make the right decision. And the right decision in this context is what's best for them and best for you, which if you have a great product and they're a good fit, it's enrolling them into your program or into your agency services. So the way that I kind of came up with this is like looking at the beliefs someone needs to have to buy and to buy now, not buy later when, when they've delayed. And then reverse engineering the questions that you should be asking so that they can come to those conclusions themselves. Because if I say it, you doubt it. If you say it, it's a fact, right? So I'm not going to say things, for example, like, Rahul, this is why you need to buy from me. Or this is why you need to do it right now. I'm going to ask the question. So I get that this, this is important to you. But I mean, if I, if I could ask you a question, man, like, why now? Why not just wait? What's so important to you about finding a solution right now so that you then quantify to me why it's important that you do it now? And, and being able to call upon the internal motivation for someone then keeps you from having to rely on external pressure tactics like a price drop close or you know an action taker's discount that just doesn't feel great. Yeah, those things can be effective, sure, but it's kind of like training wheels. If you get to be where you're really effective at drawing out the internal motivation, you don't need that stuff as much. So the questions, uh, it's actually seven now, even though the URL is tiny.cc slash six questions. I added in a seventh after doing some battle testing with it. Uh, and the seventh is really important. So essentially the questions are, what hurts? What do you want? What's the cost if nothing changes? And so going into that from the start, just breaking down each question, when I ask, what do you want? This is going to give me the intel necessary to be able to frame my product, my service, whatever, in terms of benefits that they want. So instead of saying, I have this shiny shit that you would love, it's like, because you said you wanted this, this is the right solution for you. Same thing with um, you know, what hurts. I need to know the pain that they're actually in because pain is two times a greater motivator than pleasure. So I need to be able to call upon that in their words. So I'm gonna ask like, so what's been going on? What's broken in your business? What's, uh, what's the main bottleneck that you've been facing keeping you from accomplishing that goal? Then we need to know the cost if nothing changes. And this is one of those timing questions. A lot of times you'll have people that say like, oh, this sounds perfect, but I've got to wait until next Tuesday or let me think about it. But if we can have them quantify the value to us in terms of like how much money is being left on the table if they don't make this decision, now we actually have a contrast and contrast is hugely important in selling. So. I'm going to ask, you know, what's the cost if nothing changes? If you just continue doing the same things, generating the same results, how much money are you potentially leaving on the table in comparison to what you could be generating if you had the right strategy? Another ways to ask that question might be, so Raul, I'm curious, what are some of the top people in your industry doing? Oh, you know, 50 million a year. Okay, well, got you. I'm curious, what, what have you been generating? Uh, you know, about 50,000. Wow. So that's a pretty big gap, huh? Well, yeah, it is. Well, okay, pull out your calculator and, and tell me, like, what's the cost of you not knowing what they know? And <laughs> what is that, 49 million, 900 something thousand, 50 bucks? <laughs> it's, it's a big number. <laughs> it's a lot, of, a lot of Maseratis. <laughs> right. 
And so we need to be clear on those and more so than us being clear, they need to be clear and they won't be clear until they say it themselves. Again, if I say it, you doubt it. If you say it, you own it. I would write that down right there for everybody and literally have like sticky note on your desk. Like, I mean, I, this is a different one, but right on my computer, it literally says uh, belief is a feeling of absolute certainty. While I may know that I just want to memorize it. So I have sticky notes all over my computer uh, my screens everywhere. So like shit like this, even though you know it, just reinforce it with sticky notes. So I would write that down. Can you repeat that one more time, Grant? If I say it, you doubt it. If you say it, you own it. Because when I say something to you, the internal voice can always say, yeah, whatever, that might not be true. But if you're saying it, it's a personal fact. And so again, I'm not going to ask you what the, or I'm not going to tell you what the cost is if nothing changes. It's not nearly as effective as me asking you. And when you actually are honest and you, you say it, now it's a personal fact and you're owning it. So those are the three what questions. And then we've got why questions. And I, I find it fun because when you ask a question starting with why, naturally what happens is the person on the receiving end of the question is going to dig their heels in, right? That's just how we work as humans. This is why a lot of negotiation books like uh, Never Split the Difference, for example, with Chris Voss, like say, don't start questions with why, because they'll dig their heels in. But that's actually a really, really effective um, like phenomenon if you can frame these questions to your benefit. So I'm going to ask these three why questions. Why is this important to you? I want you to quantify why it's actually important for you to have these results. Not just like, yeah, it'd be nice to have 10 grand a month extra, you know, on my bottom line. Okay, I, I hear that, but I'm curious, why is that actually important to you? Well, what would that mean? And you'll tell me. Now there's actually some attachment to it. Same thing with uh, why me? Again, I'm, I'm not going to tell you why I'm the cream of the crop. That, that puts you actually in an inferior posture if you start doing that saying, well, I've done this and I've done that. It's like, great, I don't care. I'm here for me. People are naturally just thinking about what does this mean for me? So I'm going to ask you, Raul, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you've seen there's plenty of people out there that claim to be able to solve the same problem. What makes you think that I'd be the right solution for you? Or why do you think I'd be the right fit to help you solve this? Why do you think my company would be the best choice for you? So that you then even if it's only a little bit, are going to now start building a case for why I'm the right fit for you. That's just naturally how it's going to work. And then the last one is why now? Why not wait? I, I hear that this is important to you, but why not wait? This is a huge one. If that's not answered, this is where a lot of people then have the objections of like, sounds great, perfect fit, love it. I'm going to sleep on it. I'll get back to you next week when things calm down a little bit. And we don't want that. <laughs> Our attention spans are so short. If there's no commitment made on the spot, it, chances are you're not going to get a commitment in general. So we need to know why now. And then the last question could be phrased as a what or a why. It's why have you not been able to solve this on your own? This is instilling doubt. Or what's kept you from being able to solve this on your own? Because in, even if they're clear that like, they're clear about what they want. They're clear about what it would cost if they didn't solve this problem. They see you as valuable. They know that they need to do it right now. But they also think in some way, shape, or form, maybe I could figure it out myself. We need to instill doubt. Otherwise, chances are they're going to be a do-it-yourselfer, right? So why not just do this on your own? And it might just be because they don't want to spend the time. They don't want to spend... The money they don't want to have the uncertainty but we need to know those things and again more than we need to know them they need to hear themselves say it and so ultimately that's my whole sales process is just having the right questions so that they can have emotional and logical clarity as to why it's the right decision for them and that way instead of verbatim like following a script and detaching i can have an authentic real conversation with someone to where they feel cared about they feel understood and when someone feels understood, then they'll actually be willing to trust your guidance. Until that, mm -mm, won't happen.
Yeah. And like, notice how Grant was talking. Like, I mean, everything was about tonality too. Like, that's why I said he's cool, calm and collected. And that's why like somebody with super duper high energy may kind of like push people back. So you kind of want to meet people like a little bit where they are. Um, but also just be the, the been there, done that guy. Um, you're just chill. You're cool. You're, you got good tonality, some skepticism in some cases, um, mm -hmm. so, so that really helps and that just comes with practice. So the simple seven question formula, the bonus seven, um, is a good way to use as a framework. So you have the categories and it's okay to have your Tom Brady list of notes on your desk. Um, cause if Tom Brady, the goat has a couple like little notes on his little arm right here when he's audibling, <laughs> you can too. So you can have like, here are like the categories of the what's categories of the why's um to move people through so it's not a script it's a framework it's a bullet point list as if you're giving a speech um that you practice over and over again so that's okay um and that'll get you through the whole process so grant's been kind enough to i'm um, actually are you kind enough to allow us to give this away because anybody who commented on that five by seven i kind of already promised it a hundred percent in okay. fact i mean while the strategy is proven and it works it only works as well as you apply it so yeah. It's huge. And that's why there's also videos attached that if you're going to use this, I recommend going through them and really studying that. Because what you said, Raul, is huge about tonality and just how you carry yourself. The emotions that you create within yourself are going to be transferred to your prospects. So that's one way to look at things. Now, I don't want to leave it at that because like, if you're trying to get them excited by just being super excited, that doesn't work either. Uh, ultimately like you can't be more excited about making a sale than they are about buying from you. Cause that just feels weird. You, it triggers internal buying resistance. If you're jumping on, this is the best thing since sliced bread. I promise you it's like a snake oil salesman. And so really I'll sit back. I'm calm. I'm collected because I don't need the sale. This is the frame of mind. I don't need this sale. I'm just here to diagnose a problem and prescribe a solution if there is one that fits. In the same way, a doctor is not going to get super excited about, so you have a broken bone and what we can do is put a cast on it. And the best thing about this cast is it's rock solid. It'll keep that bone from ever breaking again. And in four to six weeks, you're going to have perfect range of mobility, not a bit of pain. How excited are you to put that on? <laughs> that was good. Yeah. That was smooth, man. <laughs> He's going to tell you. So, Grant, based on my diagnosis and looking at the x rays, unfortunately, you do have a fracture and left unaddressed. This could potentially get worse. It could break all the way through. And if that happens, you're going to be in a position where you could lose a lot of nerve sensitivity in that arm. And my diagnosis is that we're going to need to put a cast on it and it might be uncomfortable for four to six weeks. But that said, at the end, you're going to have full range of motion and the pain will be gone. So where would you like to go from here? You're going to say, put that bitch right on. <laughs> because ultimately he's been thoughtful, calm, collected and prescribed the only relevant solution to the problems that you've said. Yep. Yep. And Aaron had asked, uh, what are the seven questions? I only have five. Aaron, I'll get them over to you. Uh, we'll, we'll, I'll get a link from Grant and then I'll send it to everybody on Messenger that wants it. So you got to comment five by seven and that'll allow us to go back through and send it to everybody on Messenger. Um, and I know we have, we're, we're going to be doing a hard cutoff in about 10 minutes here. So if any of you guys have additional questions i mean right now is your time if you have it after the live and you're catching on the replay totally fine ask the questions we'll get coach grant to answer them or i can too um but i wanted to ask you a question first is while you're going through this process and you've qualified them to be on a call whether it's through an advertisement like a paid ad an email whatever um, or messenger um, let's just say somebody's a perfect fit, like, um, and they're just not moving forward. How far and how deep do you challenge them? Or do you give them a little space and saying, Hey, well, why don't we talk again in two days? And in those two days, here's your homework that I want you to really think about. And when, if you are do if you do the homework and you ping me that it's done and you're serious about this, I'll even share my screen. I'm actually going to show you the inner workings of what a real student 
or not a real student, but an actual student of mine that scales past six figures will actually see and, and, and enjoy by working with us. So you mm -hmm. have all the clarity in the world. Like, what do you pivot to? Do you stay on the call or do you just force a delay? I'll never say never and I'll never say always. So it's typically a case by case basis, but you bring up a great point. So in, in the field that I'm currently in working with like fitness professionals, there's a lot of lackluster coaches out there just to be completely honest that have burned a lot of people. So when I get on the phone with someone for the business I'm currently working with nine times out of 10, they've already invested with between one and four other coaches and they aren't where they want to be. And so naturally there's a lot of skepticism and I'll do a lot of leaning back with less pressure. I want to be that person to them where they finally feel heard and understood and, and someone's being honest with them. At the same time, it's kind of a gut feeling that you need to develop through reps. There are some people who just have a pattern of delay. Like the opposite of action isn't inaction, it's delay. Like ultimately you're gonna move at some point, but you're delaying the process. And if you're clear that based on your conversation, they are leaving an exorbitant amount of money on the table or potential in their life, like being untapped into, then I wanna take a stand for them. And I'm gonna make it super clear when I do so that Raul, this isn't about me, man. I couldn't care less uh, whether you buy or not in terms of the benefit to me. But I, I do want to call attention to the fact that you told me earlier, every day that goes by, you're essentially losing out on 500 to a thousand dollars a day. And if that's the direction you want to continue on with more power to you, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and, and break your arm to fix that. But what I do know is that if we do work together, the only problem you're going to have is that we didn't get started six months sooner. Sound fair enough? Right? So I'm going to actually take a stand when the gut tells me to, but I don't have a hard and fast rule like, yes, I'm, I'm always going to make sure they buy or they don't exist to me. I'll follow up with people only if I've determined, like based on how I genuinely feel about them, they would be a good fit. So I wish I had like a hard and fast rule. I really don't, but homework is super effective. You wanna have some sort of conversion asset that covers specific topics that they're struggling with that utilizes like case studies or testimonials while teaching it. So I've got a little list of uh, five different pieces of content that myself or my team has created that I will send to people prior to our call to give them more clarity around what's going on. So if they told me, for example, leads are an issue, like I'm just not getting appointments on my calendar. I have a specific training for fitness professionals that says the top three ways to get appointments on your calendar. And so I'll send that to them to review prior to the call so that we can have more of like a level conversation. And that way they feel like they've satisfied their need for information before we get there. And the call is more about, is this culturally gonna be a good fit to work together? That's really where I want to be on calls is you already understand what we do. You've seen that it works. So what uncertainty still exists that we need to move through today together. And so a lot of times a question that I'll ask too is like, um, so how long have you been looking for someone to help you solve this problem? That's a great one. If you're not asking mm -hmm. that question already, like, you should be because if they, for example, say like, well, I just started looking. Okay, well, what happened recently that made it clear to you that you need a solution to this problem? Or if they say, I've been looking for years, it's like, wow, that's, that's crazy, man. Like, what's it cost you to not have a solution this whole time? You want to make sure like, you know, uh, or you're clarifying to them, like, you've been looking for a solution for this. This isn't just something that magically happened. And if it's something that magically happened, what spurred that? Because people don't make decisions for no reason. <laughs> like, right. they're on the phone with you for a purpose. So clarify that, too. Yeah, those are great questions because, I mean, like, asking a lot of people ask it. I don't want to say the word opposite, but differently. Um rather than saying, how long have you been looking for a solution to that problem? They may say like, well, here's about my program or go mm -hmm. into a delivery of information uh, because then it puts them right back into that, that feeling of where they were before with the previous coach or their current coach. Um, and, and just so you guys out there, like it's not, 
abnormal to coach hop and it's not abnormal to learn who what coaching you need through taking action so it's commendable that you've made bad hires or you've made bad investments because at the end of the day it's a few thousand bucks it's not like you lost your life savings but you probably took something out of that coach so now it's now it's better now you know you can learn from better people on a go forward so um i just say that as a personal experience i i i'm a i'm the kind of guy that says coach do you trust yourself and if you do here's what i'm at if you can fix me we're on board and if you can't fucking hate your ass that's pretty <laughs> much easy i'm like you get to you get to choose if you get to be my coach very simple um i, I reverse the interview do you do you have the power to be able to help me because if you're too far behind me i, I can't accept you so you tell me, are you that guy? So I, I kind of do things like straight to the coach. I kind of interview them and I'm happy to put the investment forward. And I'll just say, this is the one problem I want you to solve. I don't want you to solve, solve my lot, life's problems. I need to get one step better to get 10 steps ahead. Yeah. So I love this. I want to I want to expand on a couple of those things because, um, I mean, that's huge. Like I will ask people, uh, do you already know what you're looking for in your next investment? Because chances are they've given some thought to it. And if, if I perceive it's this one thing and I go into a big sales presentation about what I think they want and I miss the mark, or I talk about, you know, 90% of things they don't give a shit about. Listen, a confused prospect doesn't buy and you create objections typically in over communicating. So just ask them, do you already know what you're looking for? And if they do, great, make the conversation essentially about that. And then another thing you mentioned about like coach hopping, people that have been burned before. I'd prefer to work with someone who's already <laughs> has a proven track record of investing in themselves and who hasn't maybe gotten returns. And that just tells me that they're so committed to their vision that they haven't let circumstance stop them yet. So I want to put them on a pedestal for that. Because with a sales call, you're going to find that a lot of the reason people don't move forward is one of two things. They believe in themselves too much and they think, I don't need you. And so in that case, your job is to instill doubt. Or they don't believe in themselves. They feel like they're broken. They've worked with other coaches in the past that promised them results. They didn't get them. And now they question their own ability and their own judgment. In which case, you need to build them up. You need to infuse certainty. So this is where being in the pocket and actually present with another human listening to what they have to say, you'll be able to pick up on. If you're just running a script, because it's kind of a 50-50 thing, now you've only got a 50-50 chance of saying the right thing. But if you can understand, like, is this person struggling because they don't believe in themselves or are they struggling because they think they already have all the answers and we need to actually almost humble them or instill some uncertainty so that they're willing to accept the direction. If I could give any piece of advice that I don't see circulated nearly enough, it's that. To be able to understand like, do they believe in themselves too much or not enough? And then to either infuse or pull out certainty. Cool. Now let's say let, let, like, what's a Hail Mary line? Like just say like where you're like, damn, this, this isn't a good fit, but I'm still not sure they're, they're kind of like, I can't tell if they're paying attention. Is there a Hail Mary question, like something ninja that, or an animated GIF or something that you're like, fuck, that was awesome. That you remember? <laughs> um, or what, or something that's rememberable to you, or you you kind of showed somebody the way that was kind of like, you never thought they'd be a, like, communicating or hiring you ever like a story like something um, i just want to hear some memorable story here and that's so lots funny. Of i know we only have two more minutes left too uh, yeah the first thing that comes to mind was this one situation in which there was too much unwarranted certainty in themselves like they've been doing it for years no results and they weren't willing to accept help and that was the energy that i picked up on the call they were just like holding everything to the chest just wouldn't admit to any problems and I, as he started telling me another story about all the things that he's great at that still weren't yielding results, I said, dude, why the hell did you book this call with me in the first place? Why are we even here? And I just sat silent. And he looked at me like he was about to be like, well, fuck you, man. But then he's <laughs> like, I don't fucking know, man. I just need some help. It's just not working. And I don't get it. And that actually ended up being a sale. 
um, because I called, like, I was just real, like as a real human, like, why are we here? Do we actually not need to waste our time with this? It sounds like you've got it figured out. Your results don't show it, but it sounds like you feel good with where you're at. So why are we here? <laughs> that's a great and, uh, one. That's, that's right. To, right to the, that's power right there. I mean, you're just really like being a friend, like a friend would tell a friend, like that's the, 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 the honest truth. That's what you have to be. I love it. Mm -hmm. That's fucking yeah. amazing. Now that is not a question to ask on every single one of your yeah. calls, a judgment, uh, judgment call, but it, yeah. being just straight transparent and cutting to the court, not being afraid to go there. There's a video attached to the five by seven, like questions thing that everyone needs to see. I believe if you're going to ever take sales calls, it's called the key distinction. And it really dives into why are you doing this in the first place to be liked or to make a difference? Because if you're doing this to be liked, you won't go there. You won't call someone out. But if you're doing it to genuinely make a difference at sometimes that tough love, that vulnerable, like transparency to just go there in spite of knowing that they might hate you for asking the question. That's where you make a real difference. And so it's being willing to like put your own ego and your own people pleaser tendencies to the side and just show up in service. Because I don't need you to like me. I just want your life to be better. That's it. I think we can leave it at that. <laughs> Let's do that. So how did you guys like this? Let's get some hearts, some some love here for Coach Grant. I know he's got a call in about 20 seconds. So we're going to sign off here. Thank you so much, Grant. Uh, and I'm going to talk to you afterwards. Let's message about that fitness program because I got something like a, a couple people in that space looking for additional help. Sounds good, brother. This has been fun. Thanks for having me on. Yep. Thanks for coming. I'll see you soon. Cheers.